SARS CoV 2 Gene Expression Part 1 Overview Viral gene expression will be covered under the following headings Monocystronic mRNA, Polycystronic mRNA, SARS CoV 2 genome, Monocystronic translation, Issues with gene expression. Polyprotein and proteolysis, polyproteins 1A and 1AB, and programmed ribosomal shifting. Monocystronic mRNA. Before discussing viral genome expression, it is important to understand the difference between monocystronic and polycystronic mRNAs. Monocystronic mRNA encodes only one protein. It is found in all eukaryotic mRNAs. It gives a lot of flexibility to eukaryotes for controlling gene expression as it enables different gene expressions in different cells. For example, glucagon is produced by pancreatic alpha cells and insulin by pancreatic beta cells and both control blood sugar levels. As they are produced by different mRNA molecules, each one of them can be regulated independently. Monocystronic mRNA needs post-transcriptional modifications like 5' capping with methyl guanosin, 3' polyadenylation and splicing together of exons if introns are present. Monocystronic mRNA has longer lifespan as it is stabilized by post-transcriptional modifications. Polycystronic mRNA Polycystronic mRNA encodes several proteins. It is frequently found in prokaryotes. It helps in producing all proteins related to a particular function at the same time. For example, if a bacterial cell wants to use lactose as energy source, it will transcribe an mRNA molecule that will encode for multiple protein products necessary for lactose metabolism. With polycystronic mRNA, prokaryotes have less flexibility in regulating gene expression. This is because when they produce a particular mRNA, all of those protein products on that polycystronic mRNA are going to be produced simultaneously. Polycystronic mRNA does not need post-transcriptional modifications. Polycystronic mRNA has shorter lifespan as it is unstable due to lack of post-transcriptional modifications. SARS-CoV-2 Genome SARS-CoV-2 Genome is a single stretch of RNA that is more than 30 kilobases long. It encodes about 13 different genes and from these 13 genes, at least 27 proteins are made. It generates several non-structural proteins or NSPs. These NSPs have catalytic activities that are critical at different stages of viral life cycle. In addition, there are structural and accessory proteins. Important structural proteins include Spike proteins represented by S, envelope proteins represented by E, matrix proteins represented by M, and nucleocapsid proteins represented by N. Monocystronic translation After entering host cell, the SARS CoV 2 virus needs to convert its genome into a number of proteins that are going to modify the host cell making several copies of viral genomes and assembling new progeny of virions. Even though the virus can make use of host cell's cellular machinery, it has got to abide by the rules of the host cells for the operation of that machinery. In a eukaryotic cell, like our own cell, translation is a process that is generally a monocystronic one. These eukaryotic mRNAs have a 5' cap that helps recruit the ribosomes. 
these ribosomes then scan through what is called as untranslated region. It continues scanning until it locates a start codon when it starts the process of protein synthesis. This process continues until it hits a molecular stop signal and then the ribosome leaves. Everything downstream that stop signal is not seen by the ribosomes. Issues with gene expression a portion of SARS-CoV-2 genome, which has a total of 13 genes on its RNA, is shown here. As discussed earlier, and based on eukaryotic rules of monocystronic translation, the ribosome is going to come along, it will see gene 1, it will find the start codon, and start translating that into protein. It will do so until it hits stop codon for gene 1, and then it will dissociate and fall off. The remaining genes to the right of gene 1 are going to be invisible to the ribosome. So, how are the remaining genes of viral genomes expressed? At least three well-known solutions have been observed in SARS-CoV-2 which help it overcome the problem of expressing several proteins using eukaryotic rules of gene expression and translation. They are polyprotein and proteolysis, programmed ribosomal shifting, and subgenomic RNAs. Polyprotein and proteolysis Here, the virus inserts several genes into just one open reading frame called open reading frame 1 by removing stop and start signals that normally act as barriers telling the ribosome when to begin and when to end. It is separated into two sub-open reading frames, open reading frame 1A or ORF1A and open reading frame 1B or ORF1B. It is a giant open reading frame that is translated into one giant protein called as polyprotein. Within this polyprotein are proteases or molecular scissors that the virus encodes. For example, NSP3 is pepane-like protease and NSP5 is 3C-like protease. These proteases cleave giant polyprotein into individual proteins, each having a separate function for viral gene expression and replication. This way, virus generates many different proteins from one initially translated polyprotein. Polyproteins 1A and 1AB. There is one problem in the polyprotein production. There is a stop codon at the end of open reading frame 1A or ORF1A. If this is true, then only genes located in ORF1A segment of open reading frame would generate proteins and genes located in ORF1B segment would not be translated. In practice, it has been observed that about 50% of the time, the genes of ORF1A segment are translated to produce a polyprotein known as polyprotein 1A or PP1A. During the remaining time, genes of ORF1A and ORF1B together are translated to produce a larger polyprotein known as polyprotein 1AB or PP1AB. The polyprotein PP1AB is produced because the stop codon at the end of ORF1A is skipped by the ribosome due to programmed ribosomal shifting. Programmed ribosomal shifting The programmed ribosomal shifting, which causes the ribosome to skip the stop codon at the end of ORF1A, occurs because of slippery sequence and RNA pseudonaut structure. The stop codon present at the end of ORF1A is UAA. Ribosome has a propensity to occasionally slip back out of frame when it lands on this site. That is why it is known as a slippery sequence. If ribosome slips back by one place, then it will not identify the stop codon because of frame shifting. This happens because the stop codon UAA after minus 1 shifting 
is modified to UUA and AAC. As a result, it will continue to translate ORF1B genes as well, producing polyprotein PP1AB. The frequency with which the frame shift event occurs is increased because just downstream of that slippery sequence is a highly stable RNA structure called as RNA pseudonaut structure. It causes the ribosome to pause over the slippery sequence which increases the chances that it will slip back out of frame. This way, the slippery sequence and RNA pseudonaut structure are together responsible for programmed ribosome frame shifting event. Thank you.